anterior cruciate ligament tears and prevention. Tears of the anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL, make up more than 50% of knee injuries requiring surgery and affect more than an estimated 250,000 people in the United States each year. This results in direct and indirect costs of over $7 billion annually. This is one of the most researched and discussed topics in all of orthopedic surgery, which means it is a very common problem and we are always searching for a better solution. It is a very important injury and surgery to understand. Combat sports athletes are no exception to getting these injuries. Whether it was future UFC Hall of Famer Dominic Cruz sustaining two ACL tears in the same knee back to back and another tear in the other knee not long after and still making a comeback or many other high profile MMA fighters who have torn their ACLs during their fights. It is clear that the ACL is very important for athletic performance. In this video, I hope to teach you all about the anatomy of the ACL and the knee, how these injuries happen, the treatments, and to finish up discussing prevention of the injury. So the anatomy. The knee joint is constructed of four major ligaments. Yes, there are others. Since the bones that make up the knee are the round end of the femur and the flat top of the tibia, there is not a lot of bone stability. This means that the ligaments and other soft tissues like the menisci, see my separate video on those, are very important for knee stability. The ACL primarily keeps the tibia from shifting forward in relation to the femur and provides a lot of rotational stability. There are not a lot of nerves inside ligaments. This means that you will not have a lot of pain until it is too late. I also talk about this in my video about heel hook submissions. Most ligaments have poor blood supply and the ACL is no exception. What makes the ACL different from many ligaments is that it is within, it's inside a joint. This is very important to note. The usual healing processes of injured structures within the body include formation of a blood clot, migration of inflammatory and healing cells, and eventual bridging of the torn tissues. This process is already slowed with a poor blood supply, but within a joint, the joint fluid washes away and interferes with the healing process that much more. To generalize, the ACL just cannot heal like other ligaments. Symptoms. There is a collision or an awkward landing and a pop, pain, swelling, and when they try to get up and walk around, instability where it feels like the bones are actually shifting around. When the doctor does an exam, they may do several different tests. This includes really just checking the stability. And one test is the anterior drawer test. This is actually trying to slide the tibia forward in relation to the femur with the knee flexed and the foot kind of planted on the ground. There's a better test called the Lachman test where the same kind of thing is tested, but the leg is in a different position and it does take a little more skill to do the test. Another type of test is the pivot shift test that is very informative and really tests the rotational stability of the knee. But most patients that are awake don't really like having this test done to them. The orthopedic surgeon will always order an x-ray, but usually there's not a lot of information there. Occasionally there can be a very small fracture called a second fracture that is a clue that an ACL tear happened. The x-ray is helpful to get just to make sure that there's not other injuries going on and it can give the surgeon an idea of the overall shape of the bones and may guide surgical options. It is an MRI that allows visualization of the soft tissues and is the best study to make the diagnosis. It will show the actual torn ligament and if there were any other tissues injured. There is also a very characteristic bone bruise pattern that one can see on MRI that gives additional information. Causes. The most common cause of the ACL injury is actually a non-contact injury. This is where an athlete will land awkwardly from a jump or twist the knee while cutting and the ligament tears. Certainly, direct injuries to the knee can cause a tear. At this point, there are no tests that can predict who will get an ACL injury. Many things can contribute to the likelihood of an ACL tear, and this includes the shapes of the bones, neuromuscular control, genetics, and possibly hormones. It is noted that women have an increased risk 
two to six times higher of tearing their ACLs compared to men. Obviously, some of these things are not under our control. When an ACL injury does occur, there can often be other ligaments injured, most often the medial collateral ligament or the menisci. The classic contact injury on the knee causes the unhappy triad of an ACL, MCL, and medial meniscus injury, the treatment. Non-operative management is an option, especially for people who are older and or not particularly active. Even those that are fairly active can achieve good outcomes without surgery. Sometimes braces can be used to manage things. Surgery is usually recommended for those that are young and active, especially if their sport involves pivoting, changing directions such as soccer, football, skiing, wrestling, or fighting. Treatment always involves physical therapy with progressive return to activities. After surgery, therapy usually goes on for six to nine months. The timing of surgery is often up for debate, but classically, surgeons wanted the swelling to go down and full range of motion of the knee to be restored before cutting it open again and causing more swelling and possibly stiffness. However, immediate surgery is an option and there is no significant difference in outcomes long-term. That being said, waiting too long more than maybe three to five months may result in increased risk of meniscal tear and or cartilage wear. The vast, vast majority of the time, surgery must reconstruct the ACL as opposed to directly repairing it. There are rare situations where the ACL may be able to be repaired directly, and there's a newer technique that is being developed that encourages healing across a special membrane, but research is still being done and long-term outcomes need to be assessed. So. During an ACL reconstruction, the surgeon is recreating the path of the ligament with a new structure. This involves knowing the subtleties of the anatomy as well as having skilled hands. There has been a lot of debate and research about how to best reconstruct the ligament. Sometimes tissues from someone else can be used, called an allograft, but for young, active people, their own tissue, an autograft, is the best option. Where that autograft comes from is also up for debate but it could be from the hamstrings, patellar or quadriceps tendons, all of which have their own pluses and minuses. For example, harvesting the patellar tendon increases the risk of patellar fracture for a period of time, and there are higher rates of pain in front of the knee when kneeling, but the bone that comes from this graft allows it for it theoretically to heal faster. There is even some debate about using one strip or two strips of tendon when making the new ligament. There is some debate about reshaping the bones of the knee, and there's also debate on what to do with other ligaments if they are injured. So the outcomes. After surgery, normal activities can usually be started around six to nine months, but return to sport is often a full year. Rehab protocols are often customized by the surgeon and the physical therapist to the individual. Recovery progresses from pain and swelling control to gentle range of motion to strengthening to sport-specific exercises. Recovery is dependent on quality of surgery, other injuries, individual progress through physical therapy, and the sport that is being returned to. Sports do not get restarted until neuromuscular control, strength, and proprioception are all restored. Part of this delay is that it takes time for the reconstructed ligament, the tendon graft, to incorporate and become a ligament. Often, the biggest obstacle to returning to play is the mental side of the game, being ready to return to the sport. Overall, some research shows that full recovery after the surgery may be as long as two years. ACL reconstructions reliably improve stability to the knee and return to sport. Elite athletes are able to return to their sport well over 90% of the time, but up to two thirds of the time, there's a slight step down in performance in those elite athletes. While this is not ideal, this is a lot better than what used to be a career ending injury just a few generations ago. There is a chance that the new ligament ruptures, even if proper rehab is performed. I mean, it ruptured once before. And there's ongoing research being done to improve outcomes. The last thing to note is that having an ACL tear increases your risk of developing arthritis of the knee, even with a well-functioning reconstructed ACL. So prevention, there is no way to fully prevent an ACL injury. However, there are ways of reducing the risk. Since most ACL injuries are non-contact, there are ways of modifying movement to prevent those injuries. These modifications require neuromuscular training where the brain muscle connections are made to eliminate situations where the ACL would be stressed. Certain movements, such as collapsing in at the knees 
or landing with straight legs or otherwise having a stiff landing or having a twisting motion to the knee while landing are all associated with ACL injury. Poor core control also contributes to the injury. There are many neuromuscular protocols and some of these, such as the FIFA 11 Plus, has been shown to reduce ACL injuries by 50% in some studies. These protocols do require training to implement. Compliance by the athlete is important. This involves getting the athletes and coaches involved and an idea is to incorporate these neuromuscular exercises as warm-ups to get everyone in, on board. Fortunately, many of these protocols are free and easy to find on the internet. See some of the links below. So there you go. There are ways to reduce the risk of an ACL injury, but it does take work and it doesn't eliminate all risk. ACL injuries are very common. Not everyone with a torn ACL needs the surgery. Though, surgery has saved thousands and thousands of athletic careers, and now you know a little about the surgery. As always, if you have been injured, see a doctor. You can review your priorities and concerns and come up with the best plan for you. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, board certified orthopedic surgeon, still doing sports, and here trying to help you all better understand your bodies and how orthopedic surgeons try to help you get back to the things you love to do. If you like these videos, please like and share and subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks.